Hello and welcome everybody to another video here on the channel. Today we're going to talk about what exactly is Call of Duty HQ. It's something that's appeared in the files of Modern Warfare 2 on PC and now apparently it's on the back of the official Modern Warfare 2 physical edition of the game and it says the game includes Warzone 2 and Call of Duty HQ. Now before we break this down and talk about it, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed the content today, it really helps me and the channel and the algorithm. Comment as well if you have a few seconds, that also helps me hugely in the algorithm. And last but not least, if you enjoy my content enough to subscribe, then be sure to do it for more Call of Duty news, rumors, leaks, gameplay, tips and tricks. We've got it all on the channel and I'm really excited. We just hit 8,000 subscribers and we're on our way to 10K. Anyways, putting that aside, let's get back into Call of Duty HQ. I think people are sleeping on Call of Duty HQ, or actually you can't really sleep on it if you don't really know about it. Call of Duty HQ seems to be the new initiative for the Activision Call of Duty brand umbrella being Treyarch, Infinity Ward, and Sledgehammer, where all of the games will be joined under one umbrella. Now what does that mean exactly? Well, let's break it down. Call of Duty historically has ran on multiple different engines in quotations. Of course, they all date back to the Quake engine. It's an old engine, but it's pretty much indistinguishable from the original engine that Call of Duty was programmed on. It's been upgraded over the years. There's been a ton of overhauls. There's plenty of new tool sets. There's plenty of new map design tools, scripting tools. I mean, this engine has got a ton of stuff going for it. So historically, they have had forks in the engines or forks in quotations of basically the Infinity Ward engine at this point. Treyarch went off from the Call of Duty 4 engine and they created World at War. Then later down the line, Sledgehammer Games forked off of Infinity Ward's engine back in Modern Warfare 3. So what is a fork in an engine? Simply put, it's when a developer decides to take a pre-existing engine and take all of the tool sets with it and do something on their own with what's already existed. So a fork in the engine is basically when Sledgehammer Games took Modern Warfare 3's engine and they started building their own tools and their own game, essentially making almost like the Sledgehammer Games engine, but it was basically the Infinity Ward engine with some modifications on it. But over on Treyarch's side, there was a lot of heavier modifications done to the Infinity Ward engine, essentially making it what they called internally the Treyarch engine. Now, from what I understand, there is a lot of differences internally in the tool sets that Infinity Ward used and Treyarch used on their engines respectively. So now we are at a turning point with Call of Duty where all of the studios are going to be under the Infinity Ward engine and they're going to share the same tech and they're going to be able to kind of put the games in together interchangeably and work together across all studios to make all of the games. So how does this hook into Call of Duty HQ? How does this make the franchise better? Well, I'll answer that. So with Vanguard, if you don't know, it was an absolute nightmare for Activision. Sledgehammer couldn't finish their game on time, leaving Treyarch to release Black Ops Cold War significantly earlier than planned. They had to scrap a ton of stuff from the game. They had to rush out production of that game very, very fast. Unfortunately, a side effect of that, at least from what I believe, is that Warzone had to be integrated with Black Ops Cold War instead of Black Ops Cold War releasing their own Blackout Battle Royale. So at this point, Raven Software had to come in and they had to essentially make all of the weapons from Cold War from scratch and put them inside of Call of Duty Warzone. Why did they have to do it like this, you may ask? Well, the tech between the Infinity Ward engine and the Treyarch engine are completely varied in terms of texture mapping, in terms of physics, how the world interacts with the weapons itself. It is a ton of work to get things from the Treyarch engine over to the Infinity Ward engine, especially in a way that makes the weapons feel similar, which is why we saw in Warzone that a lot of those Black Ops Cold War weapons had little to no recoil. They had a lot of balancing issues because to be completely honest with you, it's actually a miracle that Raven was able to put 
every single Black Ops Cold War weapon into Warzone on the timeline that they had leading up to the launch, especially in such a working condition. Yes, they had a ton of balancing issues. Yes, they were laser beams, but the weapons worked correctly in the game for the most part. So now that Call of Duty HQ is here, which is essentially the landing pad, we'll say, or the home of Call of Duty, we essentially have one engine powering the entirety of the game that you are running. That means that Treyarch's game, Infinity Ward's game, Sledgehammer game will all be running on the same engine fork. They'll all be running on the same engine as Modern Warfare 2019, which means that Call of Duty HQ could essentially work like Halo the Master Chief Collection. Now, MCC had a ton of different games on different engines, but you could install those games to that one launcher or that one central hub, and you would be able to play every Halo game from one executable. It seems that Call of Duty HQ is trying to do the exact same thing, whereas we won't see it come to fruition with Modern Warfare 2, but we'll see it in, let's just call it Black Ops 5, where when Black Ops 5 releases, you'll actually be able to install the campaign, multiplayer, and zombies of Black Ops 5 into Call of Duty HQ next to Modern Warfare 2. What does that mean exactly? Well, let's say you're playing Black Ops 5's multi, or actually, what was it, Black Ops 6 at this point? Black Ops 6's multiplayer. Hey, you know what? I'm not feeling this. I kind of want to go and play some DMZ. Okay, let's back out of the Black Ops menu and hop into the DMZ menu. Oh, look, I'm playing Modern Warfare 2 now. I'm not feeling DMZ. I want to go back and play Modern Warfare 2's campaign. Hops in, plays Modern Warfare 2's campaign. You know what? This game is kind of getting pretty large in install size. I want to play the new FIFA or the new Madden game, but I have a 230 gigabyte install for Call of Duty. Let me uninstall Modern Warfare's campaign, Black Ops 6's campaign, Black Ops 6's multiplayer because I'm not feeling it right now. Maybe I'll uninstall Warzone as well. And oh look, the game's 90 gigabytes now. Interesting. But you can still launch all of the games that you have so we could play Modern Warfare's multi Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer, Black Ops 6's uh zombies mode, you can still play that and you can still go between them seamlessly on the Call of Duty HQ launcher. Now, simply put, this changes absolutely everything with Call of Duty. This means the development cycles will be significantly smoother. This means that the free-to-play model and the premium models will be intertwined into one launcher. This means that all of your Call of Duty games will be in, in a centralized launcher. And this means for years to come, there'll be more coherent connections between the games that release. Now, of course, at this point, we're not 100% on the specifics of Call of Duty HQ, but this video has been kind of a collection of my prior knowledge of leaks of the way that the game works all put together into one nice neat little package for you guys to hopefully understand exactly how big of a deal call of duty hq will actually be no this is not the world war ii headquarters get that out of here this is not the tower from destiny they're trying to turn call of duty into this one central game that has installs and packages of all of the other Call of Duty games, so you don't have to pick up 50 different games and back out of the game and launch up this game and launch up that game. If somebody invites you to play Black Ops Cold War, or sorry, not Black Ops Cold War, Black Ops 6's multiplayer, and you're in Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer, you'll get shoved right into the Black Ops 6 multiplayer menu, and you'll go and play with your friends. So it seems like a crazy kind of engineering task if this is true, but I do believe it to be true, and I think a lot of the signs are pointing towards it with the way that the games have been working historically, and I'm really excited to see this happen in the future. We won't know for a couple of years to come, but that's kind of the premise of what Call of Duty HQ is. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Let me know if you think it's exciting to be able to cross-launch, essentially, Call of Duty games from one central launcher. Anyways, with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.